So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about some ho hopefully useful algorithms that you can use uh, you're either today in your exercises or, or later. Um, I think the, the code itself is, is available in your files electronically. Um, so you, you can take it and edit it. Um, the variable names might not be the same, but at least those give you kind of a general idea of, of dealing with some issues. Um, and then these are the ones I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about inpatient expenditure. Um, and, and how if you really want a complete picture of inpatient expenditure, you're, you need to look at a couple different files. Um, I'm talking about looking at eligibility, um, even though, uh, you know, Max does the, uh, you know, eligibility kind of category linking for you, um, you still might want to reduce it a bit further. Um, uh, how to identify managed care, um, talking about um, uh, mental health claims and uh, ER and, and expenditure. Um, so one thing about inpatient claims is the inpatient data um, does not distinguish between inpatient uh, psychiatric and, and standard inpatient. Uh, so if you're interested in looking at psychiatric or behavioral health care, um, uh, then uh, an inpatient is an important part of what you're looking at. Uh, then you, do, you need to do a little work to um, uh, uh, pull that out. Um, a couple other things about that. Um, and there'll be one of the other algorithms, is when uh, care is delivered in an inpatient setting, it generates both a facility record, which is what you see in the IP file, in the inpatient file. You see one record per admission with admission and discharge dates and diagnoses and so on. Um, but if you have a, a physician uh, providing services in the hospital, like a procedure or something like that, uh, those uh, claims will often be submitted as physician claims and will show up in the OT file. Um, so if you want to, say, look at inpatient expenditure um, and you wanted to include those professional services, you'll need to kind of go to the OT file, look for physician services, and um, identify those that were delivered in the hospital and, and pull them in. Um, a third uh, thing here um, about inpatient psychiatric is that um, there is a separate category for inpatient stays for uh, children under the age of 21 and they are in the long-term care file. And again, this is probably more of interest if you're, if you're interested in behavioral health, uh, specifically for children, um, those are often considered residential stays. Uh, but that's, that's where you would find those. Um, um, and, and so kind of when we look at all of these things, these expenditure categories, they're all nicely available in the uh, PS record. So the PS file is the, the person level file, person summary file, one record per person. That's where you have uh, your demographics, uh, a lot of coverage characteristics. Um, it also has summary measures for utilization and cost. And those are super helpful uh, because you know, they're, they're, they're already calculated for you. Um, you don't need to go into the bigger detailed claims files and so on. And, and, and I use those too, although in the areas kind of in, inpatient, um, and also in mental health, um, if you, you might not uh, always want that specific way it's calculated in the PS file, so then you have to do a little work to, to uh, do it a little bit differently. So for our, our decision here was that we needed to take the inpatient and say which ones were psychiatric inpatient and which weren't. And so we looked at the principal diagnosis. Um, if you wanted to include more things, like every, anything psychiatric related, um, you know, then maybe you would go looking further. Um, but we decided if, it, if the first one was psychiatric, the first diagnosis, then that would be a psychiatric admission uh, versus a, um, uh, a what physical health, I guess, medical. Yeah. I, I've heard that other, um, other data sets, uh, inpatient data sets, might have something about whether it was scheduled, like a scheduled procedure uh, versus kind of an emergency or emergent procedure. Um, but I'm not, the max doesn't have any flag like that. Um, you'd have to kind of develop your own algorithm depending on what, um, what the condition was, right? You could say, well, these conditions I'm going to say are emergency and these are, are not. Um, there is kind of something similar uh, that's concept of avoidable uh, admissions and they'll look for admissions associated with certain diagnoses and they'll say, well, those are avoidable with better primary care. So maybe things related to hypertension or um, diabetes or asthma or things like that. 
but then you're saying, well, you shouldn't be hospitalized at all for those things, or they're potentially avoidable, so let's be concerned about places that have high rates of admissions for diabetes, maybe, because maybe then they need to do more uh, uh, work. You could look this also see if uh, they're admitted through the ER, be another thing to look at. So um, in the inpatient record, there are charges for various uh, revenue centers. And uh, one way of identifying ER claims, and I think it's an exercise, is to look to see if there's anything in that field for the inpatient stay, which would indicate they came in through the emergency room. Um, the outpatient algorithm that's in there, and I, I used to put the algorithms up here, but they're really hard to see, just the code on the screen. Um, but, uh, you know, it does a few different things. Um, the, the main uh, kind of role of, of the code here is to identify um, mental health uh, and to um, identify um, ER. So mental health that does have a service for psychiatric, uh, it's uh, type max type of service 53. And a lot of uh, what you consider kind of mental health uh, is, is identified with that 53. But, but some isn't. So um, if you want to look at, say, hospital, or not hospital, I'm sorry, like physician visits um, in primary care where they're treating depression, for example, that would show up, that wouldn't typically have a 53 type of service. So the ones with the 53 are usually delivered in kind of community mental health centers or other specialty mental health settings. So if you want to include kind of mental health services delivered in primary care, um, or FQHCs or things like that, then you have to look in these other types of services as well. And so we've looked at uh, the ones here, 8, 11, and 12, are kind of your st some of your standard outpatient care. So there's physician is the 8, and then 11 and 12, I think, is, is outpatient hospital and clinic. So those are three places. There's another code, uh, 10, uh, that is other provider, and that we're also looking in that field now for... Um, mental health. Um, and then there's also, uh, you can find some under, I think, targeted case management, uh, which might, which is either 31 or 33. So we've kind of expanded the list of codes that we look at for psychiatric. But within those, uh, we'll also look at the primary diagnosis to see if it's a psychiatric-related diagnosis. So we have uh, a set of, uh, you know, diagnostic codes that we've identified as mental health or, or substance abuse. Um, because we're, we're now looking at kind of the concept of behavioral health, not just mental health. And uh, we'll look through these types of services, uh, the 8, 11, 12, to see if they have a primary diagnosis of mental health. And then we kind of pull it out of those buckets and we put them in psychiatric. Um, uh, um, and so that, that's how we do that. Uh, we also use that to identify ER. So there's a place of service code. Um, so typically, the ER claims will be, uh, have a max type of service for outpatient hospital, but then they'll have an indica in the place field, they'll show that they're happening in the ER. And so that's how we'll identify emergency room admissions. Um, you can also look for certain procedure codes related to ER, uh, but there's some pretty good overlap between that and the place of service. Um, now, if you're admitted to the ER and you end up in the hospital, Right, that's going to end up as a hospital record, and it won't end up in this file. And so you'll want to, if you want to know about those, you'll need to look at the hospital record, again, for that ER uh, uh, area and the, the revenue code. Um, then we also look, this is where we pull out the physician claims I was talking about, the eights. It's usually, it's usually eights that happen in the hospital, and there are uh, a few different place of service codes that relate to hospital care. Uh, so if you're the kind of the, the uh, uh, physician doing a procedure during an inpatient stay, it'll show up in this file. Yeah, so we use the place of service to identify those physician services that occur at a hospital. Um, so, you know, if they're submitting a professional claim for the hospital, uh, for the ER, and also for, uh, for mental health, because some uh, services will say they're taking place in like a community mental health center or something like that. And then we'll, we kind of go through this process of, you know, reading. The, so it takes some time. The OT files are the biggest files. Uh, but we kind of, you know, limit it to these types of services and, and then run through to identify these different types and kind of, and then we wrap it up to the person level. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll create different categories of service, whether it's, you know, when we leave it as physician, clinic, and outpatient hospital, and psychiatric, we kind of start off with those four 
types of services, and then we identify other 8, 11s, and 12s, so we move into psychiatric, and those would be if they have a primary diagnosis of mental health or a place of service that's a mental health center, and we'll move them into the psychiatric category. Then we'll pull ER out of the outpatient hospital, and then we'll pull you know, physician out of uh, the, uh, the, the inpatient hospital stuff out of physician claims, and then we kind of wrap it up to the individual level, and so we have one record per person. Um, this is just describing a little bit more detail on how we do the uh, behavioral health services. Um, you know, it's either a type of services, psychiatric, or it happens at a community health center, or it's you know uh, this this other uh, you know uh, psychiatric facility, um, or those are place of service codes, or the primary diagnosis is you know mental health, um, and we've also looked at these other types of service, so a lot of mental health uh, we, we think is identified as other providers. Um, also targeted case management and rehabilitation are used. And some of the states use more of that than others. Some of them really actively use the targeted case management option for people with psychiatric disabilities. And, and there's also this kind of uh, idea of the rehabil re rehabilitation type of service. Um, uh, you know, then we have some algorithms here to uh, that we, we combine the files back, um, uh, calculating age, eligibility, and expenditure. Um, uh, about eligibility, so Max has 26 age categories, so a lot less that was in that slide, California slide I showed, but still a lot. And uh, you can combine them into kind of four major categories, um, which we do. And so we look for the aged, uh, the disabled. Um, TANF children and TANF adults. So those are the four eight categories we, we, we uh, calculate. And kind of with, within those, you're combining uh, people that have uh, um, you know, cash assistance versus medically needy and, and some other things. Uh, so just kind of uh, taking all the different kind of disabled categories and you know, combining them into one indicator for disabled. Uh, there might be some things you want to pick out out of there. So Cash assistance, SSI, is fairly common among the aged and disabled categories, but not everyone has it. So if you want to look specifically at how those uh, individuals might be different, you can uh, you know, create an indicator variable, for example, for cash assistance. Uh, foster care children, so if you're looking at foster care children, um, often you want to look at them you know, as their own group. Um, so we've done that as well when, we, when we're looking at behavioral health service use among children. Uh, we'll look at disabled children. Uh, foster care children, and then the rest of the TANF children. Um, uh, but if you're doing kind of the, the other studies I showed you earlier, we combine the foster care into the TANF. So if you look at the severity of illness, there's usually they're somewhere in between TANF children and uh, disabled. Uh, so they, did, they tend to be, uh, ha, you know, have some illnesses, a lot of psychiatric or behavioral illnesses. You know, foster care children uh, are often exposed to more uh, severe adverse events in childhood that, that lead to some mental health uh, uh, needs. Um, uh, dual eligibility flags, we will usually calculate an indicator for dual eligibility. Virtually all the aged have dual eligibility um, and uh, virtually none of the TANF. Um, so if we find like a handful of people, you know, uh, that are the oddballs, we'll usually kind of just, you know, com combine them. Uh, and then disabled is about 50-50, maybe a little bit more than 50% have dual eligibility. So you will want to track that. Um, and then also, you know, looking at restricted benefits. I think the code has, uh, it will kind of look through those restricted benefit flags. If they have that in any, any month, um, you know, indicates that they have restricted benefits. Um, the other thing to think about is, you know, Max has 33 expenditure categories. Um, you might just want total cost or you might want to look at certain types of cost. Maybe you want to report all 33 types of costs, but it seems like kind of a lot. And so we, 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 uh, we just proposed some groupings. One is acute, um, other services, and long-term care. And so what is an other services? Well, other services is actually a type of service. I think it's 19. Um, so uh, we combine uh, most of the, you know, the largest number of them into uh, acute. We call you know inpatient, outpatient, uh, you know, pharmacy, uh, and so on are in acute. Um, and then long-term care would be kind of nursing facilities, ICFMRs, institutionalized care uh, is an LTC. But you still got this group of other services. And um, um, if you look at it, 
you know, we've tend to we, we, and try to pull it apart. It seems to be some combination of things that are probably acute um, uh, or homing or ho kind of homing community based uh, long term care. Uh, so depending on what you're looking at, if you're interested in these kind of homing community based services, you probably you want to delve in there and see what you can pull out. But you're going to have to kind of probably look at the procedures being delivered and, and so on to kind of really get a feel for what's in there. Um, and then under acute. Uh, we would create five categories, so inpatient, outpatient, pharmacy, mental health, and other. Um, and then within outpatient, uh, you can look at, for example, physician, outpatient hospital, clinic, uh, laboratory, and x-ray. Uh, so this gives you an idea of different ways to cut, cut the data. Um, and, and then when you look at managed care, uh, you know, realize there's different types. Um, we talked about, you know, the idea of this comprehensive prepaid, you know, HMO, uh, uh, the, you know, the comprehensive risk uh, HMO. Um, uh, there's also indicators for being in behavioral health managed care. Um, and so sometimes, uh, you know, these flags get a little tricky because you could be in a comprehensive HMO that covers, you know, behavioral health, or you could have a behavioral health carve out um, and then you could have managed care for behavioral health. So you could have, you know, managed care for both or just for one, but it does cover behavioral health, or you could have just behavioral health coverage. Um, so that part gets a little complicated. Also in the behavioral health coverage, it's not clear um, if they do have an HMO if, or if you do have kind of behavioral health managed care, you still might see claims uh, coming in there. Um, so when you get into behavioral health, you know, you probably need to, uh, you know, put a little work into looking at the encounters and the claims and trying to figure out, you know, is this person, you know, does this person have full coverage? Um, one easy way to do it if you're not worried about losing people is just to drop anybody that's in an HMO or a behavioral health HMO, and that's kind of one way around it. Um, there's a couple other less common uh, managed cares. Uh, well, there's the PCCM we talked about. Uh, that, that's fairly common. Uh, there's a PACE. Uh, which is managed long-term care. Uh, uh, it's a model that combines acute and long-term care for the elderly. It's a very specific model. Um, okay, so that's something that might, uh, that's, that's kind of tending to, uh, people are starting to look at, you know, different models for managed long-term care. And I know California is experimenting with models, for example, where, um, you know, you'll get the capitation rate for, you know, being in the community, um, and then if you're admitted to the nursing home, uh, there'll be a little bit of a delay before you switch to the nursing home rate. And vice versa, if you get discharged from the nursing home, a little bit of a delay before you switch back to the community rate. And the idea here is to provide incentives to keep people out of nursing homes. So the managed care plans, uh, you know, in the past, you know, once they, someone enters the nursing home, they're, they're, not, you know, they're not at risk for that. Now they're just giving them a little bit of a risk to try to, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of provide some incentive to, to keeping them in the community. Um, uh, there's also capitation is in there. We've, we've talked a bit about. There's also dental behavior, the dental managed care. So we've been doing a study of dental services, and so we've been looking at that, that field as well.